I'll close with this thought. Everybody knows the John 8 story of the woman caught in the act of adultery. We've all got, we've all had plenty of preaching and teaching on it. Everybody has their opinion about what Jesus wrote in the sand, and I don't want to go down that road. What I want to show you is the one thing that when the Lord really revealed this to me, it really changed my life in the world of condemnation. See, we in gray circles, we know and we love to say that Jesus said to the woman, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. It's the go-to verse we quote when we quote John 8. Neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. That's awesome. But did you notice what got Jesus to that point? What brought him to saying that? They bring the adulterous woman to Jesus and they throw her at his feet and Jesus goes through the story of uh, he without sin among you cast the first stone, writes on the ground. They drop their rocks. The Bible says that from the oldest to the youngest of them, they drop their rocks and they leave. And then Jesus just writes on the ground again. It's almost as if he goes back to whatever doodles he was doing when they walked up. And he asks the woman a vital question that we often miss. He says to her, woman, where are your accusers? And she says, I don't have any accusers. That's the key. Did you hear it? Before you jump all the way to the beautiful gift of no condemnation, stop right there for a second. Because Jesus did. That's why he's doing all that ground riding. Woman, where are your accusers? She looks around. It's the first time she's looked around. She's scared. She's had, she's had her head down this whole time. Woman, where are your accusers? She brings her head up. It's okay to look, apparently. And she looks back. I think this scene doesn't take two seconds. I think it takes two minutes. Five minutes, ten minutes. She turns and she sees nobody. She turns around to a doodling Jesus. <laughs> and she says, I don't have any accusers. And he says, well then, you don't have one here either. Go and sin no more. And it struck me. The reason why people are still having problems with condemnation is because they're still listening to the accuser. Jesus did not come to just remove your condemnation. Jesus come to silence your accusers. And if there's nobody accusing you, what are you condemned of? That's why I love Revelation 12 when Michael casts the devil and his angels out of heaven. See, I don't think that's in your future. Because if that's in your future, then you have an accuser right now standing in front of God. Revelation 12 says, The accuser of the brethren was cast out, and now is salvation. So if Revelation 12 is still in your future, so is salvation. But salvation is in your present. Why? Because your accuser's been cast out of the heavens. If he's been cast out of the heavens, that means there's no one standing in front of God accusing you. In fact, he would have no weapons if he did show up. The book of Colossians says, Jesus took that which was contrary to us, which was in our way, and he took it out of the way and he nailed it to his cross and he triumphed over the forces of darkness by making fun of them by holding it up in front of them. That's the, that's the Greek reference. He literally showed them, said, look, this which you used to use against my people, the law, their performance, you can't use that anymore. I'm going to nail that to the cross. Now what do you got? So I think the enemy said, well, I've got, their, I got the voices from their past. I got the accusations of their co-workers and their parents and their governments and their peoples and their enemies and their friends. I'll still use stuff. And he's right. He does. And we buy the lie that we're less than the Bible says we are. Be calm and collected. Be cautiously attentive to the accusation. Bring those together and realize that your enemy is just a roaring lion running around seeking him he may devour. And I love to use the illustration that the lion never roars when he's on the hunt. Do you notice that? If he's on the hunt and he roars, what happens? <laughs> there goes the prey. He only roars when he's asserting his authority. And that's what the accusation voice is trying to do. So the roaring lion, if he's actually on the hunt and he's roaring at the same time, he's not as good as he acts like he is. So that's what I like to tell people is you've got an enemy that's not smart enough to stop roaring when he's coming after you. He's making all kinds of noise and fireworks on his way to attacking you. You should see him coming from a mile away because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You can rest in it. You can relax in it. You can know him.